All right, everybody, today's new lesson is on using multiplicative inverses to solve equations. And I want to underline the word here, multiplicative inverses. And remember, multiplicative inverses, another word for that is reciprocal. Okay? So we're going to be using multiplicative inverses or reciprocals to solve equations today. So before we actually get into the multiplicative inverses part of this, I want to just remind us on some of our rules for solving equations. If I have this problem here, x minus 25 equals 20, the way that we showed our work on how to do this is we always did the inverse operation. So when I see this minus 25 right here, well, I want to get rid of that. So I get rid of a minus 25 by adding 25. And the rule was whatever you did to one side of the equation, you had to do to the other. Okay? So then the minus 25 and the plus 25 cancel out, giving me x equals 20 plus 25 plus 45. Okay, so you always do an inverse operations to solve things. Okay? The next thing was is if we had, and I'll change colors here, if we had a multiplication or division. So if I have x, uh, or I'm sorry, 3x equals 99, okay? Well, whatever's with the variable is what I want to get rid of. So I see this 3 that's with the variable x. So what I'm going to do is, since that's 3 times x, is I do the inverse. The inverse of multiplying is to divide. I get rid of a 3 by dividing by 3, okay? And the reason I do that is because 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, okay? They end up just reducing, and that's what leaves me with x over there. But since I divided by 3 on the left, I'm going to divide by 3 on the right. 99 divided by 3 is 33, Okay, so those are two things that we learned uh, when we were solving equations. And then if we kind of combine those two rules here, again, I'll make a third color, is if I did something like this, a negative 2x plus 16 equals 30. Well, we combine them because I'm going to have to get rid of this plus 16. The inverse of adding 16 is to subtract 16, so I'm going to have to do that. I'm also going to have to get rid of that negative 2 that's being multiplied by x. And I get rid of a multiplying by negative 2 by dividing by negative 2, the inverse. The big rule was, which one do I do first? Well, we're doing the inverse of order of operation. So i got to get rid of the, the plus 16 first. Okay, so I get rid of a plus 16 by minusing 16. Over here, they slash kill. They go away. I minus 16 from the other side, leaving me negative 2x equals 30. And a negative 16 gives me positive 14. So I'm going to rewrite here. I've got a negative 2x equals 14, and then it's just a one-step equation. I get rid of that negative 2 by dividing by negative 2. Negative 2 over negative 2 slash kill, they go away. Divide by negative 2 on the right, giving me x equals positive divided by negative is a negative 7 for a final answer. So those are a couple quick reviews of how to solve equations. All right, now we're going to do some uh, that have rational numbers in them. So the fraction 4 sevenths, okay, we're going to solve this equation. And again, what I see here is that this 4 sevenths is being multiplied by x. So the inverse of multiplying is to divide. But what we just learned was if I were to divide by 4 sevenths, that would be dividing by a fraction, which really means that we need to multiply by its reciprocal 7 fourths. Okay, so the way we show our work on this all right, instead of doing a division, division, I can get rid of any fraction here by simply doing this. Multiplying, and notice how I write it off to the left there. I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. Because if you multiply two numbers together that are reciprocals like these two, you end up getting a 1. Because 4 and 4 reduce to 1s, 7s reduce to 1s, leaving me with just 1x, okay, which we all know we can just simply write as x because the 1 can be dropped. Okay, then here's the rule. Since I multiplied by this 7 fourths over here on the left, I then have to multiply by 7 fourths on the right because whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And now it's just a multiplication problem. Okay, I got negative 12 times 7 over 4. We know that a whole number can be written over 1. And then we go ahead, do our reducing. The 4 and the 12 by dividing by 4 gives me 1 and 3 and we multiply across, okay? 3 times 7 on top is 21. 1 times 1 on the bottom is 1. Don't forget that this is a negative that's being multiplied by a positive 7 fourths, so I get a negative answer. And 21 over 1 gives me 21, so it's a negative 
21. So again, we get rid of that fraction that's with the x just by multiplying by its reciprocal makes it go away. And then you have to do that same thing to the other side. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. So go ahead and pause the video. Give it a try. Okay, should be back. So I see this 5, 6 that's being multiplied by the end. That means I have to get rid of the 5, 6. Since it's a fraction, I know I can get rid of the 5, 6 by multiplying by its reciprocal. 6 over 5, because the 5's slash kill, the 6's slash kill, and that's what leaves me with just M. Now remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So since I multiply by 6 over 5 on the left, I multiply by 6 over 5 on the right, and I just have to solve this multiplication problem. The whole number gets put over 1. I can reduce 5 and 20 become 1 and 4, which gives me 24 over 1 which is simply just 24. There weren't any negatives in the problem, so I don't have to worry about that. So it's a positive answer. Okay, here's another one for me. So I'll do example three. I'll let you guys do example four. So this is a two-step equation because I have this right here, that negative 11 15 that's being multiplied by x. I'm going to get rid of that negative 11 15 just like we did in the first two examples by multiplying by the reciprocal. However, I've got to get rid of the plus 4 fifths first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get rid of a plus 4 fifths by subtracting 4 fifths. And just like any whole number, those are opposites. They cancel each other out. But since I subtracted 4 fifths on the left, I have to subtract 4 fifths on the right. And look at what we get here. We really just get this subtracting problem. So a little bit of work involved, but we have to go ahead and find common denominators. So I'm going to switch these over and say common denominator is going to be 15. Now I'm just going to do this off to the side. So then this is times 5, so which means the 1 is times 5, so that becomes 5 over 15. The 5 is times 3, so the 4 is times 3, which gives me 12 over 15, and it's a subtraction. Okay, so what I end up doing, because the signs are different, is subtracting. 12 minus 5 gives me 7 fifteenths, and there were more negatives, so that's an 8. So that's what ends up on the right-hand side of the equation. Then I still have this negative 11 fifteenths x that's over here on the left-hand side. Well, after we do this, now it's back to what we did in example 1 and 2, which is to get rid of that fraction. So I get rid of a negative 11 fifteenths by multiplying by a negative 15 elevenths. It's got to be its reciprocal. The negatives cancel out because a negative times a negative give me a positive. That's exactly what I want. The 11 slash kill, the 15 slash kill, giving me just x. Okay, but since I multiplied by negative 15 over 11 on the left, I have to multiply by negative 15 over 11 on the right. 15 slash kill, I get 7 over 11. And again, it's a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. 7, 11. So a lot of work involved there. Got to be very, very careful that you know when you're adding or subtracting, you got to get common denominators. When you're multiplying, you do not. And go from there. Last problem. This one's for you guys. So give it a try. Okay, you're back. Okay. I know I have to get rid of that negative two-thirds. That's with the P. But I'm not going to do that first. I'm first going to get rid of the plus one-half by minusing one-half. Because those are going to slash kill. And then I have to subtract one half over here. Okay, common denominators. Okay, I'm going to keep them something over six. So if I want them both over six, this one half has to end up becoming, by going times three, it's going to become three six. And I get five six minus three six, which is two six. So that's what I get over on the right by doing this. My answer was two sixth. Okay, then on the left hand side, I still have the negative two thirds. P. Okay, so now I get rid of that negative two-thirds that's being multiplied by the P by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is negative three over two. The twos cancel, the threes cancel, a negative times a negative leaves me with a positive P. Since I multiplied by negative three over two on the left, I multiply by negative three over two on the right. Negative. The twos cancel, the three and the six become one half, giving me 1 times 1 on top is 1, 2 times 1 on the bottom is 2, and don't forget it's a positive times a negative, so it's a negative, and I get a final answer of P equals negative 1 half. Okay, that's our lesson for today. Good luck.